In this video, we will learn about two column proofs and do one example of a two column proof. So a two column proof is just a way to organize your thinking in order to prove an idea. So two column proofs are called two column proofs because they are organized into two columns. And the two columns are called your statements and your reasons. So we're going to start by organizing our columns right now. So we have statements on the left and reasons on the right. You always have to give a reason for everything that you say. When you're doing a two column proof, you are trying to prove something and you're always given some information to start. So in the two column proof, you start with the information that you're given and then make logical conclusions step by step until you reach what you're trying to prove. So in this example, it says we're given angle A and angle B are supplementary angles. Angle B and angle C are also supplementary angles. And we're trying to prove that angle A must be congruent to angle C. So what we're going to do is start with our givens. So those are angle A and angle B are supplementary. And that the reason I know that is because it was given. And the second thing I know is that angle B and angle C are also supplementary. And that was also given. Notice what I've done so far is started with the given information in the problem. So just what was written in the givens. And I've also numbered each thing that I'm writing so I can keep it nice and organized in the table. So now you have to do some thinking. You have to think, well, if I know that these two angles are supplementary, what does that tell me? What do I know about supplementary angles? Well, if you remember the definition of supplementary angles, it says that there are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So that's the next thing that I'm actually going to write, is that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B has to equal 180 degrees. And similarly, the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C also equals 180 degrees. I combined both of those things into one sort of step because they're essentially the same idea. And the reason I know this is the definition of supplementary angles, which says two angles are supplementary, they add to 180 degrees. All right. Now I notice that I have two different things, measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B, and the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, which both equal to 180 degrees. That means I can use the substitution property so to sort of combine those two equations together. So that would be saying that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. All I did was replace this 180 degrees with my measure of angle A plus measure of angle B, basically. And that is the substitution property of equality. Now the next thing I can do, because I have an angle B, or actually more specifically a measure of angle B on both sides, I can subtract the measure of angle B from both sides in order to get one more statement, which is that the measure of angle A has to equal the measure of angle C. That's what you get when you subtract the measure of angle B from both sides. So that's the subtraction property of equality. Now, I'm almost there. I was trying to prove that angle A was congruent to angle C, and I've just shown that the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C. So this last step is really minor as far as what it's saying, but we can just say at this point that angle A has to be congruent to angle C because congruent angles have equal measures. So I'm just going to write it like this. Congruent angles have equal measures. 
Now, one thing to notice is that I just used the symbol for congruent and the symbol for equal in my proof. That's totally fine. You can use symbols and shorthand to make it easier for yourself. A couple of other things to notice overall. Remember, we started out with our statements and our reasons. Then we went on to have the givens. That's always where you want to start. And where you're going to end is with whatever you were trying to prove in the original problem. That's what the result should be. So you just have to go step by step and number each step that you're doing, each logical conclusion, until you get to what you were trying to prove.